Hello, everyone. I always go to say welcome to my channel, but welcome to the group. Welcome to the Teacher Mind, where we are masterminding around teachers' online businesses. So today we have Rebecca in the hot seat. She asked a question and she said she didn't mind coming and sit in in the hot seat. And we have Sherry and Mary. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so can we just take like a quick minute to let everybody know who you are and how they know you in the teacher realm or how will they know you in the teacher area? So let's see. Rebecca, I think you logged in first. You want to go first? Sure. So my name is Rebecca and I've taught for 11 years. Uh, some have been in person, some have been online. And uh, you can find me on OutSchool. I teach uh, math games and science experiments. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where I do most of my teaching nowadays. Awesome. Good. Sherry, you're up next. Hi, everyone. My name is Sherry Gibson. And these days, I've been working with solopreneurs who struggle with content creation and have a burning desire to share their message with their ideal clients. But I still do a little teaching on the side without school, and I have some private students as well. Awesome. And your background as a teacher was in speech. Yes, I have a speech therapy degree, and I practiced as a speech therapist for over 20 years. So in terms of teaching, my background is VIP kid and then outdoor education at Nature Center kind of stuff and, mm -hmm. and homeschooling my son for so long. Um, and then prior to that, I was a counselor therapist and did a lot of teaching in my groups and individual sessions and stuff. But. Right. Awesome. All right. So we're going to keep to our time. I had made a little schedule before. And we're going to try really hard to stick with it. So first, Rebecca, you had asked a question. Do you remember your question? Can you let everyone know what our question Easily. is today? So let's say I want to get more students, which we all do. We all want to get more students. Students, uh, where do I start? Uh, do I do ads? Do I pay for ads? Are there ways we can do it for free? Like, where do I even start with marketing right. myself? Awesome. So, has anyone used paid ads? Whether you're on the panel or um, in the chat box, let us know. Sherry, have you used paid ads for your classes or for? Yes, I've used some paid ads for my classes as well as for my clients that I'm writing content for. Mm -hmm. But um, I think my initial response when you're talking about paid ads is you need to really consider, are you going to focus on a certain geographic area for your students? Yeah. Because one thing is, you know, um, when you're, you don't have to put very much money into it. Usually when I do ads for my clients, it's $20. I just put the cap of $20 and I'll run it usually as a promotion for a certain upcoming event for like seven days. And a lot of people say Facebook ads are a waste of money, but I think it's because they're not making sure that they are targeting their ideal client. And there are people, I'm not saying I'm the guru at ads, I'm not. There are people who are amazing Facebook yeah. ad and Google ad writers. Of course, that costs a little money. The other thing I was going to say is you're on OutSchool. OutSchool does some of the most amazing marketing that I've seen out there. But as a private teacher, you have to kind of learn on your own through YouTube, seeing what other people are doing that's helpful. But you don't have to have paid ads. You can go completely organic it does take some time, but you can do it. Right. I agree. I have done ads, but not for classes. I have done it for other things. And you definitely need to be niched down in that. Your geographic, like she was saying, your age groups, your geographical. The more niche you are in ads, I think the better. But that's just my personal, my personal thing. So I don't think you should use ads as a new teacher, especially. Um, Mary, you want to touch on that before we... Go to the next point. <laughs> never done paid ads, but I would imagine that, you know, doing things like YouTube or finding a way to do some um, initial free stuff just to get people to bite in mm -hmm. to then upsell to something else, whether that be samplings on YouTube where people are searching or going into groups and saying, hey, I just, you know, Facebook, you know, all the different Facebook groups where parents are looking for classes. Yeah. Looking for places where you can get that free advertising simply by offering 
mini or sample courses? So one of the things I was thinking is word of mouth, right? You see a movie and you tell people how great it is and then they go and see the movie. So I think word of mouth is very important. So make sure you are delivering the best classes that you can and tell the parents and students, hey, let your friends know, let family know, let, you know, if you have reviews at wherever you are currently working for, or if you're working for yourself, there are ways to have parents review you. What is it? LinkedIn and things, right, Sherry? Where we did some reviews. Um, have them spread the word. I think word of mouth can be one of the best, most effective and cheapest ways <laughs> to market yourself. Like, so if a parent refers you to another parent, what about giving them some kind of benefit for that? Like a referral benefit, uh, mm -hmm. like a thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of and companies are... do that where it's like, oh, have I no, made it? No, okay. <laughs> I had to be <laughs> earlier. Uh, I know some companies are like, okay, give 20, get 20 kind of thing where, mm -hmm. you know, you refer a new student, I'll take a little bit off of your tuition. Um, so yeah, yeah that, as a private teacher, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And some of the um, platforms that you can use as a private teacher, also you can set up affiliate and referral links for fairly easily too. Some of the ones I've looked up, Graphy, Groove, um, you can use Basically, you go in there in your little sales thing and toggle a switch on some of them and put in what you're offering and things. So it can be pretty easy as well. So yeah, great idea, Mary. I didn't even think about that and put that in my notes. <laughs> so Sherry, any thoughts on word of mouth or spreading the word? Yeah, I, I do exactly what Mary does. I um, if when I was trying to build students because um, you know I'm ca I'm capped. So um, the other thing I wanted to say is even when you think you're full and you're busy, you should still have people in that pipeline because inevitably someone's going to go stay with grandma for the summer. Yeah. So you need to fill that spot or whatever, because that does happen to me occasionally. They'll, they'll go visit family. But um, what I was saying is I, I do a referral program when I do have a couple of spots that I know are coming open. I'll let my parents know, hey, I'm anticipating having these times available. If you know anyone, they get a free lesson if someone buys a package of so many um, classes. So is it like a wait list or do you have like an email list or you just tell the parents? So I do have a wait list of some people who've asked to be with me, but I have them in a WeChat group for my mm -hmm. Chinese students. And then for my other students, I have an email list, which we could be a whole other mastermind to talk about making sure that you curate an email list as a mm. private teacher. Guilty, but yes. <laughs> I know. I agree. I said it, it took me forever. <laughs> yeah, that's another mastermind. Let's plan that one. <laughs> okay, so yeah, a wait list um, I think is a great idea. Um, especially if you have a wait list, you are, you're on it, right? You're popular. <laughs> well, and the other thing that I do, another referral source is other teachers. So sometimes I'll have someone who says, you know, oh, I'll, I'll go on your wait list. And I'll say, oh, well, if you don't want to be on a wait list, I have a list of several other teachers that I think would be great options. And sometimes they take it up, take me up on that. And mm -hmm. gosh, I think I've referred probably six kids in the last month to different teachers. Yeah. So and that they does think to me, you know. Right. That does bring me to my next um, point as an action step is to collaborate with other teachers. So, you know, you help each other and not just that they want one of your classes and you put them on a wait list or you give them to another teacher, but you may teach say STEM and I may teach something else. And then we can keep sending students back and forth for each other. Right. Um, so I think collaborating with other teachers and if you are marketing, now, you know, YouTube is kind of my jam. So if you are marketing, say on YouTube, you can collaborate with other teachers or parents to give you maybe a live review or a, um, and just another avenue to market. So if you're collaborating with another teacher, you essentially get their group and they get yours. So you are sharing in between the groups too. So I think collaborations is, is one way to grow your audience. And 
teachers have kids also, so they might, <laughs> right? Okay, anything else on that? Not yet. So I have um, choose one social media platform and stick with it until you're good at it. When I was getting started, I thought, wait, I got to do YouTube. And then what's this Instagram thing? And, you know, and I got excited because I made a LinkedIn profile and two parents reached out to me and a couple of schools asking if I wanted some students that were leaving VIP kid. And it's exciting, but it's overwhelming. And to try to keep up with all the different platforms is really hard, at least for me. <laughs> Sherry smiles. Unless you're good and organized, or maybe you have something like Hootsuite or something where your content gets no, I, um, dispersed. I, I agree with you. I think that sticking with one platform first, but the big part is making sure you're using the platform where your ideal clients are. Okay, so if you're niching into, let's say, test prep for the TOEFL, mm. then is your ideal client going to be on Facebook? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is hot. Um, it's a great lead generator. And um, so just kind of thinking where are your people going to hang out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I started with YouTube and LinkedIn seems to be People seem to be reaching out to me more on LinkedIn lately, although I do get a lot of views and questions on my YouTube, but as far as students finding me, it's LinkedIn and I haven't done much on there. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about LinkedIn. So how are, how is it being used for you marketing as a teacher, except I've done nothing with LinkedIn? Sorry, do you want to answer that one or you want? Go ahead. Well, for me, I just made a profile and it says that I'm a teacher and I've been uploading some some of my videos, my teaching videos from YouTube, just on LinkedIn and okay. using hashtags and things like that. So, yeah. so you need to optimize your profile. Of course, there are paid people that will do that and um, <laughs> do quite well. But if you use the content, like I said, I work with blah, 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 who struggle with blah, 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 and have a desire to, or want to blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you, you plug in that information so that they can read in a sentence your elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. And then they'll see, oh, and then that'll make them want to look further. Yeah. That, and then also you can link your Facebook business page. So if you do have other social media, you want to make sure that it doesn't have to be amazing, but the content needs to be accurate. Yeah. And repurpose your content. Yes. So if you have a couple of different social media platforms, repurpose. So YouTube is one of mine for example we're using Facebook here so I've been taking clips of the masterminds and just putting them up there or I mean you know how you know how it works you just take something of one and put it the other or this little idea and use it as you know find a cute graphic and a quote from one of us or something so repurpose your content is a time saver I need to do it more <laughs> all right so what do you think so far Rebecca pretty interesting yeah, it, you know, I like the baby steps, start slow, do one platform, mm -hmm. don't recreate the wheel every time, you know, maybe just kind of keep a copy of what ads are working, post those over and over again. Um, I like to repurpose the content. Why recreate it when you can just reuse what you've already made? Um, yes. Yeah, good, yeah, good points. So something else um, I want to mention is having good foundations, okay? So that would be things like, your thumbnails. Um, I use Canva. There is a free version. It's just kind of easy for me. Um, your logo, your brand. Those are fun things that I never really did. But if you want to be known as Teacher Casey, then that is like your brand name, right? Or some I've seen on there, you know, learning English with so-and-so or something. Keep your logo, keep your name on pretty much everything. So they hear your name, they think of teacher, right? Or they think of whatever it is your niche is. Um, so I have a question for you, Rebecca. Okay. So you've got little ones that go through the classes, right? Um, do you let them choose what classes they want to take? Uh, like my my daughters, uh, mm -hmm. what class? Sometimes, yeah. So those give them choices, but sometimes I just choose for them because they're. Uh, my oldest is five, and so right. go, what do I what do I think that they will like? 
um, because, you know, they might go, that was a cool one, but none of the times working on schedule. So right. I don't want to, you know, send her hopes up for nothing. I'll just say, hey, I send you for a class next week. It's going to be about this, this, <laughs> and this. Like, yay, get her, you know, right. get her excited about it. <laughs> So it kind of set you up for that question, because I want to know when she is looking through the classes, she's not necessarily reading everything, right? No, what she's, yeah, she she's just five. For? She's looking at the pictures and mm-hmm. I'm doing the reading. <laughs> right. So for marketing yourself, you want to make sure the colors, your headings, your descriptions, everything is on point. Your descriptions and things are going to be for the parents, but your thumbnails, your colors, your graphics, your you profile image. Pro- Mm-hmm. You want those probably towards your students, because if they're going to scroll through and they see this super fun, I know you do like rainbow things, super fun rainbow class, right? That's going to get her attention and she's going to ask for that class. And then the parents will read the age group, the descriptions. Oh, we've seen Re- teacher Rebecca here, there, you know, and everywhere. Yeah, it's it's so easy to do. And like you said, when you're starting out, it's it gives you templates that you can just fill images and words and play with it. And it looks professional and you're not spending the money up front having someone else design it. It's just super easy. And they have a free version. So it's like. Why maybe. not? <laughs> right. So yeah, I made a logo the- on it. And so I've been trying to put it on all of my worksheets that I send to the students. That way they know this is my work. <laughs> nice. um, they can't you know, copy it. So I just remember I make the work and then I tag it some corner somewhere just so that I can label it. Yeah, I've been doing the same. Um, so how have you guys seen on YouTube the like level one lesson of this school or this class or um, for VIP kid, it was like MC level something. And they had like thousands of views on these sample classes. So one thing that you can do is make a sample class for the teachers and parents. Since if you are not working with a company, I know in our school they can see, so you want to make sure that you have your video there. But if you're working for yourself, when I would go and hire a teacher, even at the beginning of the year, when my kids would find out who their teachers were, I Facebooked, I like looked them up on Facebook and I didn't really stalk them, but I definitely wanted to see what they were about. So I think... When parents are looking for teachers, they may Google your name to see what comes up. And if you have a sample class with some SEO, we'll talk about that, search engine op- optimization, you want them to, what's that? That's what you're talking about? <laughs> so um, you want to make sure that maybe you have a sample lesson. They can see your style. They can see your teaching style, your classroom, and things like that. So I would encourage teachers that are using social media to make either a sample lesson or some kind of demo to show what you're made of. Now, do you have to be careful about putting kids' faces on there? Like, you don't want to just post the whole class of a Zoom class on there. Mm -hmm. You want to hide their faces or just have it you speaking. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just worried about parents going, hey, how come my kid is now on Google? (laughs) Yeah, never. I would never put a child up there. Never, never. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking sample classes that kind of like the, the demo we might have done on VIP kids showing mm-hmm. the parents how we teach. You're not talking about a sample of an actual class. You're talking about sample. It could be. It could be. I mean, you could video yourself maybe with another device, you know, facing this way. And then I am teaching this way. You can't see the students. You might be able to hear a voice or two every once in a while. You can either keep that or bleep that out. If you don't use their names, then you're safe. But um, you can do a sample lesson and show what you have. So I would say either way, either use an actual lesson or a a demo. But I think you should put something up there. Because I know some of the VIP YouTube videos had, you know, the PowerPoint, had the teacher, and then had the student with like a smiley face over the head or something. So you can't see the face. Mm -hmm. You can hear some voice, you know, every once in a while, um, but they saw what the classroom setup looks like. Mm -hmm. I put a sticky note on it one time. It worked great. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You just have to make sure you hide the faces. That's a low tech way. I was going to mention briefly in listings, if you're an out school teacher and a lot of out school teachers know this, but um, like if you're already on out school, search your class, search the topic and see if it comes up, see how low down on the ranking 
And if it doesn't come up as an option right away, then your, your listing is not optimized. Don't use emojis in your listing because that kicks Google looks at that and it, it doesn't translate well. Now using emojis in social media posting, great. That just makes sure that you're limited. Email newsletters, only use two or three emojis in the subject line if you decide to do that. But be careful with like thinking of the keywords, type into Google, what type of class it is, see what kinds of things come up and that will let you know without having to pay for software or any special programs that help you with keyword research, just type in Google and see what comes up and then go from there. Or let me know if you want me to search your class, I will gladly search on else we'll yeah. see the keywords. And I know some people open up an incognito tab on mm -hmm. on their you know Google Chrome, so it doesn't connect to the cookies that you may have searched before, yeah. and search it as like a blind parent. Yeah, um, that's kind of cool to see where it comes up. Now I know OutSchool generally searches by um, uh, time base, so the more um, soon the class starts, the higher up in the list it is. So if I have a class today, like I've got a class coming up in about twenty minutes, that's going to be on top. But if I right. search like on Sunday where all my classes are Wednesday through Thursday, you know, it's going to be later because they're not Sunday classes or Monday classes. So it also depends on I think on we need to research that because I think that's changing from some of the things that I've seen without school mm -hmm. lately. I'll have to look at it. I, at one point, the default was starting soonest. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that Google sometimes kind of takes over, you know, how Google right, is. Right. But if you, yeah, if you do a Google search for it, it's different than searching within yeah, OutSchool exactly. itself. Right. So yeah, yeah, a good idea to do both. I've, I've searched within OutSchool itself. The other day I was curious and I searched my name on Google. I'm like, oh, these cool things come up. Cool. But why these <laughs> classes and not the other classes? That's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Super cool. Um, Google yourself. <laughs> yeah. You said anyway, I think I go incognito on YouTube all the time because I want to see if my searches work and I'm in a ladies group for YouTube, um, where we have to search each other's videos. And if your video is hard to find, they're not going to sit there and keep searching. So you're going to be moved to like next. So I always search mine, go incognito and searches. That's a great point. Um, and then I know that if I can find my video, then other people should too. So um, anything else on that? I think that's pretty cool. Now everyone's like researching and thinking about incognito and <laughs> can we put fly glasses on? Right? Yeah. 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 Let's all search each Your other. Tell me what mode. comes up when you search my name. <laughs> I think it's good to be, you know, an anonymous parent or pretend to be somebody else or search for a friend to go, it is it searchable? Because if it's not searchable, mm -hmm. it's not foundable. If you if you have to go to page two to find it, then that's not going to work out for you. You need to be on page one. <laughs> yeah. Some people won't sit there and scroll. Unless yeah. you've got a good image and it catches their eye as soon as they're like scrolling just before they're tired of scrolling. <laughs> then, yeah. so that's why I think images are not the most important because you need to have your keywords in there. But I definitely think your thumbnails, your graphics are very important. Um, and one other thing I wanted to mention is consistency. If you are on these social media platforms marketing yourself, you want to build something called no like, and trust. You've probably heard me say this before. If you say you're going to post at least once a week, you want to post at least once a week. Parents want that consistency and teachers, friends, subscribers, they want consistency. They want to know that you're going to be there giving their information, giving them information. Um, so if you say you're going to be there two or three times, try to be there two or three, three times. We know things come up. That's not the thing, but you want to stay consistent um, and build that know, like, and trust. So anything else on that? We are almost at the time. We're doing so good. <laughs> that is my goal. My goal is to organize my time better. So any last minute things, ladies, before we sign off here? I think we hit on quite a bit. I am good. It's good. It's a good place for, today, to, for so. people to start. I, I like it. So Rebecca, was the hot seat very, was it very hot? 
Scared. Actually, it wasn't. We're, we, I was okay. I'm not sweating. You know, I'm good. I'm kind of like, here's my question. Now I'm going to sit back and listen. Yeah, that's the hot seat. The hot seat is you just state your question and we can. Now, the next step is accountability. So now you have to come back and tell us what things you've implemented. And how yeah, so I can figure out what's my niche, what platform do I want to start yes. with that fits my age group, um, you know, and, and then maybe put some stuff out there, you know, I like the organic way of just sharing. I don't want to say, hey, look at me, book me. It's like, hey, look at what we've been doing in class and, you know, just kind of sharing yeah. and then just see what happens. And talking about word of mouth, sometimes I go into that, um, the, some of the Facebook groups and I'll say, anytime I see art, I tag Jerry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just know she's an art teacher and loves what she does. So um, somebody said Spanish. I tagged Evelyn. So if you're in there in those groups and you have someone that you know is a great teacher that fits them, tag them mm -hmm. so that um, so they know you're tagging them and word of mouth and they may tag you sometimes. So I would say just um, just keep at it. All right, everyone. So if you would like more information on marketing or SEO, branding, other things to help build your online business, feel free to get with me. I have a Calendly link. I'll put it in the description box below. It's just like a 15 minute chat. Chat with me on building your business. So that's it. All right, everybody. All right. Thanks, thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.